When you are writing scripts to monitor and automate your routerized devices, you have several options to choose from. We got SNMP, we got API, and in version 7, we introduced REST API. But those are not the only options. Today, I will have a quick look at SSH as an alternative. Some of our users have been using SSH in this manner for years already, like Daniel Faust, who mentioned in comments that he is using the Python library async SSH to monitor an IP list. I have not tried it, but I think it is a great idea. If you don't need to request a lot of data continuously, and the JSON data format is of no use in your situation, then just use SSH. In our last video, we set up SSH RSA login. So now I'm going to use the same setup to demonstrate how SSH could be used in a similar manner as API. So let's start with router OS. We're going to run some scripts on router 1, and we want to get data from router 2. So on router 1, I'm just going to print the interfaces on router 1. And similarly, I can get the same data from router 2 with the system SSH command. And as you can see, the interfaces are a little bit different as it's a different device. And the formatting is also a little bit different. Now, this is okay if we just want to have a look ourselves, but we couldn't use it within a script because the SSH command in RouterOS is interactive. So anything that's written in a script after this SSH command simply would not be executed. For this purpose, there is another command called SSH exec. And as you can see, all the data is now appearing bunched up. But if we actually save this to a file, it would be formatted again. In fact, I've, I have a script prepared. Here we are simply creating a new variable called router to data. And then we're saving the output of this command we just ran into that variable. Then we create a simple text file. And then we change the, the contents of the text file to our router to data variable. So if I run it, you can see that a new text file was created. And to view the contents, we can type file edit contents. As you can see, new line characters have been introduced again. For some reason, there's an extra new line character after each line. I'm not sure why that happens. But you could parse this data now in RouterOS further if you wanted to use it in a script. We will do more videos on RouterOS scripting in the future, as it can be a lengthy subject and we can't cover it just now. So let's have a couple other examples in bash scripting. We could type the SSH command as usual. followed by double quote and the command we want to run on RouterOS. Further, I could also use something like grep to get a specific result. And as you can see, I got LAN and LTE filtered out. But of course, you could do the same uh, by requesting only uh, the specific data items that you want from RouterOS. So let's do that. We're simply going to add the where property. And to do more than one um, name parameter, we can use the or name again. And I'm using these escape characters. These slashes are escaping the double quote so that we do not mess up the SSH double quote uh, command. Okay, so now you can see that there's also the column names and there's also this error message. So if there's any error me messages along with an interface, you'll also get to see it this way. If we want to use this data further, we could, for example, uh, save it to a file. A file showed up 
and then the inside of it we can see the same data. Alternatively, I could save it as a variable. Of course, you can further use this variable in your bash scripts. Personally, I would prefer Python as it is such an easy, almost self-explanatory programming language. I will not get into any examples as I have not worked with async SSH or any other Python SSH libraries, but let us know in the comments if you would like to see some Python code in action with Microtik routers. Thank you for watching.